<laughs> yeah, so I think uh, what's interesting with, with Google is the introduction of Performance Max has thrown a gigantic wrench in all things attribution. Look, all of you are doing the wrong thing. You're looking at the wrong thing. You're measuring the wrong thing. The one thing that I always tell people is look at your overall MER, media efficiency ratio. That is going to tell you the overall efficiency of everything working together. We typically won't work with clients if it's like, well, Facebook's doing good, but Google isn't or vice versa. It's not necessarily the point. We don't want to pin them against each other. So let's get into this, John, which is um, where where do we stand now in terms of attribution generally in, and, and really in reference to what it has to do with Google Ads? So you know, we kind of went through the iOS 14 era of that being a, a, a place where all of us were trying to find answers. Mm -hmm. A lot of us turned to third-party tools and uh, to help with that and aid with that. And now where I think we find ourselves is the third-party tools that are out there um, have grown to be business operating centers for some of us that have started to use it, um, as well as measuring attribution. Um, and I feel like some of us have a good answer of here's what's happening when you do this. And some of us, it's still murky. And for clients, it's still murky. Um, meanwhile, the platforms, uh, at least on the meta side, are you know, on a click basis becoming more accurate with model data or with mm -hmm. um, you know, more real data, not as modeled as it once was. Mm -hmm. So where do what's your opinion on this now? of what the landscape is and where do people get caught up? Like what's the common things that you hear that you're like, I want to shout this from the rooftops. Like this is actually what I think. <laughs> yeah. So I think uh, what's interesting with, with Google is the introduction of performance max has thrown a gigantic wrench in all things attribution because Google moved towards a data driven model of, of its own attribution within Google ads. And then performance max opened up, you know, YouTube, GSP search, shopping, display, discovery, and built in remarketing that now takes credit for all things new repeat and, and um, stolen from, Omni from other channels. <clears throat> so I think that the the situation that we're in now is to look less in platform and to look into more detailed analytics inside of third party attributions and not necessarily take them as true face value, but track trends. Um, the conversion path length and the conversion path um, variables, such as like a click on you know, Facebook, a view on Facebook, then a view on YouTube, then a click in Google, and then a sign up for an email, and then two weeks later, a conversion. All of those things have to be identified as commonalities for us to really be able to do our jobs well as digital marketers working together with other agencies, or if you're doing everything into one, truly identifying what that top conversion path is. And I think that the conversion path is something that people don't quite look at, and they look at individual channel row as whether it's with inside of you know Google or Facebook or with inside of a third-party attribution tool like Northbeam, and sometimes take it for too much face value. Tracking the trends and identifying the conversion paths will then give you more information as to why those metrics look the way they do. Um, the differences between the click and view model, for example, is going to say, hey, a person clicked here or a person viewed this and then clicked at a potentially different campaign. So understanding just the variances between those two and then tracking those trends um, is going to be important. So uh, the one thing that I always tell people is look at your overall MER, media efficiency ratio. That is going to tell you the overall efficiency of everything working together identify what's working the best, reallocate what is not having an actual impact on your bottom line and reallocate it to what you can identify working the best, which is those top conversion paths and tracking those trends. When I make one change, how does it overall affect everything? So we have to be we have to be better marketers by working together. And we typically won't work with clients if it's like, well, Facebook's doing good, but Google isn't or vice versa. It's not necessarily the point. We don't want to pin them against each other. The client still wants to show up everywhere, but gets upset when they show up sometimes multiple times each. Um, so we have to really lean into um, higher amount of brand awareness and attribution on multiple channels and less into who's doing better because there's more overlap than anybody knows about. This is not a glitch. 
I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I want to remind you that we provide done-for-you Google Ads services. We're the number one ranked Google Ads agency on the planet with almost $100 million in ad spend under management. If you're an entrepreneur, business owner, C-level exec, director of marketing, and you're managing your own Google Ads, I think that's a massively inefficient use of your time. As a matter of fact, in my experience, within 90 days, we're able to optimize existing campaigns to a point to where we're paying for ourselves. We move from being a cost center to a profit center, and I want to put my time and my money where my mouth is. If you're spending $10,000 a month or more in Google Ads, I want to offer you a free, no obligation action plan. A high level member of my team, one of our strategists, will look at your account, open the hood, and do it full diagnostic and explain everything that we would recommend that you change in order to optimize your campaigns. You can take that, do it yourself, you can hand it to an internal member of your team, or in an ideal world, you can hire us. I'd love the opportunity to, to earn your business. Please go to sol8.com. That's sol, the number 8.com. Request your free action plan. Until then, back to your regularly scheduled program. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I think the, to me, what gives you, um, what gives me clarity on that answer is uh, I often feel as an advertiser, and you know, we run an agency too, and I often feel like, some days I feel like I have the answers really clearly and some days it feels muddy still, right? And mm -hmm. it feels like not muddy, but it feels more uh, just overwhelming the amount of, of, of ways that this can be described. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a certain position in the marketplace that puts people on their heels, myself included, which is, um, look, all of you are doing the wrong thing. You're looking at the wrong thing. You're measuring the wrong thing. And um, it, and, and, you know, now it's, it's, it's going to continue to be confusing. And that's just what it is, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or there's this other metric that I'm looking at that you don't know about yet. Um, and so I think it's, it's, it's not black and white, like you said, it's not one's doing better one, you know, like pitting them against each other. It is, it, it is, and, and there, it's multi, it, it's multifaceted, and it's incredibly complex. And especially mm -hmm. for brands that are spending even more, the more you spend, the more complex it can be. And I mm -hmm. often think sometimes the smaller clients that we have uh, overcomplicate or the smaller agencies, we overcomplicate it sometimes um, when we don't need to, right? Mm -hmm. So there's an inverse relationship in, in, in some aspects of it. Attribution sucks. We can prove it. <laughs> so we actually have, uh, uh, I want to set the stage. So it's going to take just a couple minutes, but I want to disprove anybody that might be thinking that there's some, some tomfoolery about. And so what I wanted to share with you first off is in this account, inside of the conversion action, 